Good afternoon, everybody. All right. My name's Matt Groves. I'm a pre-sales consultant here at Point Beyond. Been with the company, well, just coming up a year now. Um, but having spent the last 15 or so years working in a very similar solution space, so all around uh, SharePoint and Microsoft Cloud and workflow and business process and Intex and, and all that good stuff. I'm really lucky to be joined today by uh, a client of ours, um, uh, Jessica from Hogarth. Uh, Hogarth are a client with, uh, that we've worked with for a little while, particularly around Office 365, SharePoint Online, uh, Nintex, obviously, hence the, uh, the webinar today. Also a little bit around Project Server um, and just general advice and guidance and, and implementation and, and adoption work with, uh, with Hogarth. So with no further ado, I'll hand over to Jess, who uh, obviously can introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Um... Uh, my name is Jessica Chu and I'm a technical project manager working for a company called Hogarth Worldwide. So just to give you a bit of overview about the company, uh, Hogarth specializes in media production and language services for global brands and um, is a WPP owned global company um, that also provides and manages production technology for in-house studio facilities. Um, I've been with Hogar for nearly three years now and I'm responsible for managing the Office 365 environment for the company including the architecture and strategy planning, communications, change management and user adoption of services in Office 365. Um, so up to this point I've been working very closely with uh, Point Beyond covering in text to date. Over to you Matt. Wonderful, thank you very much Jessica. So, agenda for today's webinar, uh, we'll be running through obviously some high level scene setting stuff and uh, getting a, a bit of a, a more detailed view from, from Jessica as to what, what Hogarth are doing around uh, kind of forms, workflow and Mintech stuff. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of what the, what the products and some of the solutions that can be built using the product and Mintech forms of workflow. Um, a live demo, no smoke and mirrors involved, a genuine live demo, so let's hope that hangs together. Uh, and then lastly, covering off the takeaways and, of course, next steps and, and actions. So, obviously, we're, we're here to talk about processes, which is you know, forms, workflow, reporting, you know, alerts, all, all that good stuff. Some of the examples that, that we see and we've implemented for, for clients um, cover lots and lots of different areas. Um, one of the key things that I'm hoping to get across with today's webinar is not only can you do some relatively straightforward things around information capture on forms and then feeding things through a structured workflow, um, but also using it as a way of tying together different platforms and different services that you've invested in. So an example of that, um, just within Office 365 in the Microsoft Cloud, You've got loads and loads of different pillars within that, things like OneDrive, Yammer, Dynamic CRM, project sites. There's loads and loads of different areas that you may have um, content that you want to store, aspects of an end-to-end -end process that, that may be including some of those pillars from the Microsoft Cloud. Now, that's just in the cloud. That's not taking into account things that may be present within the uh, your own data centers, your on-premises infrastructure that you've had um, for, for many, many years. What Nintex allows us to do is to take some of the what they refer to as horizontal solutions into vertical markets. markets. So things like um, expense approval is a, a very specific process within, uh, within HR and administration finance, but is actually quite horizontal when you think about what are what are the aspects that it's built from. So it's built from capturing some data, passing that into an organizational process that involves some routing of tasks and activities to individuals within that organization. What Nintex allows us to do very, very quickly is to leverage the Microsoft Office 365 Cloud and aspects of, of Azure and Dynamics CRM, bringing things together with a coherent process that appears to the end users to be a single entry point into a process, a single view on a process, and a single exit point to that process. Whereas without having something like Nintex in the mix to tie, in and tr tie some of these disparate pillars of technology together, you can end up with quite a disjointed 
experience to the end user that they maybe have to go into Dynamics CRM to do uh, part of their process, but then go into SharePoint Online to do another bit of the process, and then go into, into Yammer to do another piece of the process, which can be quite confusing. It's difficult to train people in how to use that. It's difficult to onboard people into how to work in that kind of environment, whereas having a a unifying layer that, that strings everything together, such as Nintex Workflows, is a great way of achieving that. So I'll hand over to, to Jess to talk about some of the, the things that, um, that Hogarth have done around Office 365 and, and, and Nintex, um, and obviously how we've been, been helping them. So uh, over to you, Jessica. Thanks, Matt. Uh, hello everyone. So firstly, let me uh, cover some background. So here at Hogarth, we decided to move to Office 365, as many organizations have, uh, to ultimately reduce our infrastructure costs and deliver a more modern, mobile-friendly, cross-platform set of services to the business. Uh, we actually have a very small tech team here, and we're always looking to achieve more and deliver more you know, often with quite strict budgets. Um, and we also have a very high percentage of our users who use Mac and are mobile. So for us, Office 365 is not only a great tool for Hogarth, but across WPP as a day-to-day -day enterprise platform. Um, we have also begun using Intex this year. So as um, you know, as with many organizations like us, we have a lot of existing business processes yeah, that's still done manually on paper or by email. Hence, you know, we're starting to replace these with the use of Nintex forms and workflows running alongside our Office 365 tenant. Um, I think we're not dissimilar from many of you attending this webinar in that we like a technology that is new to us, um, but also that we want it to be proven within our company before we roll it out across the business. Um, and you know we can't just jump in, uh, you know, with two feet, you know. And this was certainly the case with the Nintex technology. Uh, we started out with some simple forms and some straightforward processes to prove that the technology, um, and to ensure that we were comfortable and confident that we could work with it, and that it could deliver what we needed from the tool alongside our Office 365 investment. You know, and I'm happy to tell you that we are. Um, and today we have, with the, with the assistance of Point Beyond, uh, we've carried out some small scale projects to build some forms and get some simple workflows up and running to capture business information. And over the past few months, uh, with some knowledge transfer from the Point Beyond team, we found that we can actually do more of the work of the Nintex work ourselves than we'd originally expected. Um, and we've become quite confident in the product's abilities and the feature set. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of an overview of some of the key times that are on our roadmap for Nintex uh, next year. Um, so using Nintex forms and workflow for Office 365, um, we're working with Point Beyond to build a solution that allows end users to request a new SharePoint site through an automated process. Um, you know, some of the key goals for this are you know, to ultimately stop um, an uncontrollable sprawl of sites, um, but also to prevent IT from being a bottleneck. Um, we want to ensure that you know, the government standards and the policies are maintained. Um, and we want to reduce the amount of time spent on setting up sites and you know want to automate the approval process. Um, something that we're actually doing right now is that we are, we are engaging with uh, the Point Beyond team to automate some of our HR and finance processes for our uh, HR site, um, you know, which is obviously handling some potentially sensitive data. So um, you know, we're hoping to get this finished by the end of this year so that we could roll out our HR site and the workflow processes out, um, and I'm sure you know that there are plenty of other examples you know of of using in text as time goes on. Um, but in summary, we're happy with what Nintex provides, you know, as a software and a technology vendor, 
and you know we're happy working with Point Beyond and I think that is quite evidenced by the fact that I'm here on the webinar with Matt uh, you know I wouldn't be here you know talking about Nintex if I didn't think that Nintex was a good solution and Point Beyond were a good partner to work with um, so on that note I'll hand this back over to Matt now that you know I'm sure he has a lot of ground to cover Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Jessica. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Great introduction. Thank you very much. Um, you're welcome. Ashley, just while you're, uh, while you're still with us, um, just uh, ask a couple of questions. Sorry to put you on the spot. Um, so, Jess, what, what do you think are, you know, in terms of your role within Hogarth, what are the main advantages to you of, of the Nintex technology? So, in my role, you know, I see a lot of the problems that uh, yeah, that the business needs IT to solve and you know the main advantage of Nintex to me is that it allows us to be really responsive to the business users and you know deliver what they need and ultimately you know and quickly as well you know um, with Nintex you know we don't need to spend a lot of time you know writing specs and, and, and documentation we can ultimately just focus on the delivery so as long as we get a brief in the requirements of you know what they want in their forms or workflows we can you know kick off and just build it um, you know and um, you know we're getting a lot of requests uh, you know from business users that you know often boil down to processes that are similar to what is already, you know, capturing information, assigning work, um, you know, work that you know, generates an output or monitor and tracking work as it progresses, you know, and it means that we could reutilize the stuff that we've already done um, and rework them, you know, and tailor it to maybe other teams or departments if they, you know, for the processes that are maybe a bit different to them. So. Yeah, um, you know, I think that's what the main advantages of of Nintex are. Fantastic, and um, that's that's great. I mean, that certainly echoes with the the kind of experiences that we have working with uh, working with our other clients around the, around the product and, and obviously our our own use of Nintex. Um, what do you think? You know, first to ask a, a similar question around the advantages of Nintex to some of the end users out there within Hogarth. What, what do you think they'd say the advantages of Nintex would be? Oh, um, I think that's a quite a tough one, Matt. Um, well, yeah. In fact, I think you know there would be a really large number of um, our end users who actually wouldn't know the name Nintex at all. You know, they essentially just you know they just see the workflows or the forms or the activities that are you know are that are overlying. They don't see the underlying technology behind it. Um, and I think the question um, to us would be, you know, really would be, you know, what impact has the rollout of the electronic forms had on them? And and I'm pretty sure that would be uh, answered um, as like, you know, it's a massive time saver, and it certainly helped to standardise some of um, our working processes and, uh, and patterns, you know. Um, uh, in fact, you know, we now get requests from people asking for us to deliver a process, you know, using forms or workflows for their specific needs, because they've used it in a different in a, in, a, in a different context, or they've seen it, you know, being used by a different team, um, and they can see how a solution could benefit uh, them. Um, you know, which is really helping us to drive the adoption of the investment we've made in the cloud technologies, you know, from both Microsoft and Intex. Splendid. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Jessica. Sorry to put you on the spot there. Um, You're very welcome. <laughs> Grant, I'll, uh, I'll carry on. Thanks. Okay. So, um, a little bit more about the, uh, the, the tech stack then. So, um, probably a question that many on the webinar will already know the answer because you may be already in the process of adopting the cloud, but I'm sure that there'll be some of you that are still in the in the early stages of, of thinking and, and planning and, and maybe you've got some pretty big concerns about going to the cloud. So let me just quickly cover off some of those things because obviously we're here to primarily to talk about Office 365 um, and Mintex Online. So within the Office 365 uh, world, there's uh, you know, a huge set of features. You've got your, your email, obviously, 
Um, that's still, I think, the, the number one driver as to why people are adopting Office 365, just to, to, to ship their, their email up to the cloud. It makes a huge amount of financial sense. It makes huge technical sense. But there are also clients that we have that are looking at adopting 365 not with the sole purpose of, of doing email and actually exploiting the rest of the, the stack that they're buying into. So things like the ability to do collaboration in new and innovative ways, exploiting Share, SharePoint Online and, and Yammer um, and some of the new things that Microsoft are releasing within the cloud platform. So things like Delve and the, the video portals and, and all that good stuff. And it's, I guess, one of the key takeaways of any Office 365 conversation is it's a it's a constantly moving technology platform. Microsoft referred to it as evergreen. You're always on the latest version. There isn't a you know three year release cycle to it. It's constantly updated with a well published, well documented roadmap, so you know what's coming down the track. There's like I said, loads and loads of features around around collaboration. There is an element of uh, of data capture with, with things like SharePoint lists and with with workflows that you can do. But it's a, as is often the case with, with Microsoft offerings, it's a good, solid offering, but you add another layer on top of it from the, the ISV community, and then obviously Nintex is, is, is one of the leaders in that space, and you get a lot, lot more for your money. So, why do people adopt the cloud? Well, as I've already kind of mentioned, agility. You know, the fact that you are able to spin things up on demand now, going from having having been in this world for a long, long time, organizations looking at, at leveraging something like SharePoint, historically a SharePoint project would be months and months and months, and a lot of that would be infrastructure planning. Planning the number of servers, the amount of storage and authentication schemes and lots of things of that area, whereas as now you just enable a site, spin it up, and away you go. What Nintex also allows us to do is to... Um, Focus more on the business process uh, that that's required, irrespective really of what the uh, what the area is within the business. Lots and lots of of use cases ranging from the relatively simple to the, the far more complex. Key aspect of the the Nintex Cloud is that it isn't just about Office three six five. If you're if you within your organisation, you're in a quite lucky position that you may be able to just focus on Office 365, um, and you're very, very lucky. Most of our clients have other cloud technologies that they work with or other on-premise technologies, and Nintex is able to, via its suite of connectors, communicate with lots of other platforms. The Nintex platform itself is based primarily on the Workflow and Forms engine. There's the Nintex Mobile, which I'll come on to include in the demo, and the Nintex Live component, which is the kind of the glue in the cloud that allows Nintex to communicate with not only Office 365, but also things like Salesforce, things like Azure, Google apply, uh, Google um, Apps, et cetera, et cetera. And what this really does is allows you to automate far more of your business processes than you maybe think you were going to be able to do. Um, the design palette is really straightforward and simple, both for the forms and for the workflow. Um, you don't need to be a hardcore coder. You don't need to be super tech savvy in order to, to wield Nintex. I often liken it to you know, you've, you've, almost certainly within your organization, um, outside of IT, you've got that one person who is the go-to person for any Excel cleverness. That's the ideal kind of candidate for picking up the, the Nintex workflow. You don't need to be a super techie person but someone who has uh, an understanding of what the requirements of the business is and what the process flow needs to look like, implementing that within a visual design uh, palette that we have here in Nintex is, uh, is, is really straightforward. Where you've got more complexity, so you need to talk to a third-party system that Nintex doesn't talk to natively, that's where you are going to need development capability, a partner such as Point Beyond to come in and create these custom actions for you, these custom connectors that allow you to Again, from a, a workflow designer perspective, get a module, drag and drop it onto the screen. So you may have a, you know, go and update your bespoke or legacy HR system um, at the end of a, uh, a business process. That just becomes a module that you drag and drop into the workflow um, and determine which of the fields that you want to pass across to that other system. 
So, with uh, with no further ado, let's get on with uh, the demo. Um, as I said earlier, it's a live demo. There's no smoke and mirrors involved. So, um, let's hope that it all hangs together. So, my demo scenario is that I'm uh, minimize that down. So I may be at a, a sales or a marketing event or a trade show or expo of some sort, and I want to be capturing uh, information about uh, opportunities and, and leads. Um, and I, I don't want to be doing that on, on paper to then have to retype it when I get back to the office. I want to be doing that live. So uh, I'm going to show a couple of different examples of the, uh, the mobile world here. So let me just bring these, uh, bring these across. So I've got on the, the left-hand side here uh, a Windows phone and uh, on the right-hand side uh, an iPad. So let's say I'm uh, at an event and I'm, uh, I'm working with my Windows phone, talking to someone else who's at the event and, and they express an interest in the, um, uh, what I'm trying to sell them. So in this instance, some, uh, some Nintex licenses and some, some services. Um, I log into my Nintex mobile app. I'm not going to walk you through how to log in. It's you enter a, a username and a password, and um, away you go. You're involved in, <laughs> in, in Nintex mobile. In this instance, the, the user that I'm logged in as, my demo user, I've only got one form targeted at me. Um, what we can do within the, the Nintex mobile application stack is that we can target individual forms to specific users or specific applications. So one of the things that you get with the enterprise license of uh, Nintex mobile is the ability to create basically your own mobile applications that work across Windows mobile, iOS, um, and of course Android. Now, any of you that have been involved in any kind of projects that have done mobile application development before will be very, very aware as to how expensive these things can be. So having uh, the ability to package up a new lead registration application, target it at the, the three common um, phone platforms, roll that out via your own mobile device management and MDM solutions, such as Intune uh, from the Microsoft Cloud or there are obviously other uh, on-prem and cloud options available. Um, deploy that into uh, uh, into your estate, and away you go. You, know, you can have your own expense process, your own expense application, rather. You can have your, your own sickness or time recording uh, app delivered to your organization. So in this instance, I've got my uh, register a new lead. Um, lots and lots of fields to fill in. So rather than bore you to tears showing you uh, my inability to type on a touch screen. Here's one that I've prepared earlier. So we just fill out these fields, just typing in on the screen as you would expect. Here's my typing. We can do all the standard types of fields, you know, drop downs, check boxes, radio buttons, etc., etc. We can also add attachments in here. So here's a, a picture that I took just a few minutes ago while I was prepping the demo of my phone taking a picture of my phone taking a picture of my phone on the screen, which I thought was quite an artistic fact. And I can attach that to my form submission and submit it into the um, uh, into my workflow. Um, we can also, with the with the mobile apps, make use of other features within the mobile platform. So, for example, one of the things that we that we do a lot of with clients, particularly those who have a, a geographically dispersed workforce, is to include the geographical coordinates of where the form was submitted from. Um, which, when you think of things like um, incident reporting, accident reporting. Um, is really, really useful. If you've got a, a campus type, type environment, being able to know exactly where within your campus something took place is incredibly useful. Likewise, if you're a council delivering public services and one of those services is street lighting and you, there's a street light that's, um, that's not working, one of your operatives being able to tag exactly which street light it is geographically is, is hugely useful. Uh, exactly the same kind of abilities within the iOS world. So um, 
Here's the uh, the app running on uh, on iOS. Um, just to show you the kind of the way that it makes use of platform features. So the the drop downs are the, appear like that on a Windows phone. Exactly the the same drop down appears slightly differently on iOS because it follows the way that the that the platform itself wants to display drop downs, check boxes, radio buttons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So here's my uh, my example that I'm going to flow through. So Charlie Brown, speaking with him at a uh, uh, event, we know that the next step is that we need to go and talk to his boss, Charles Schultz. So then I'm just going to submit that into my process. That initially goes into my drafts folder. And if I'm quick enough, there we are. We see it's in the outbox. And then it's submitted. The reason it goes into my outbox is it works in a very similar way to email working offline. That if you're offline, then you need the ability to create something. It sits in the outbox until such time that you've got connectivity. Um, so if you were at a, a trade show where you were, oh, I don't know, underground or in a remote location, you didn't have connectivity, you can still fill out all these forms, still capture all that information, and then as soon as you emerge from uh, underground or you regain connectivity be that Wi-Fi or 3G then those forms will be sent off and everything submitted. So as my demo user, so uh, imaginatively titled Nintex demo user, what I've done is I've submitted that, that lead. So that lead has now gone into a SharePoint list. So here we are, uh, Charlie Brown, there's all the information that I captured about um, the, the guy that I was talking to at my recent event. What this is now going to do is, is, is take the information that I've created, sorry, the, the information that I've entered, pass that into my CRM system. I'm using, in this instance, CRM online. And we can see at the moment that the, the state of the workflow is that it is just going through the CRM lead registration. So in a moment's time, I'm going to log into the CRM interface and I'll see that Charlie Brown has been created. <clears throat> so going to leads, hopefully by now he's there. Excellent. So created just a, uh, a minute ago, Charlie Brown, you see that we've passed the information from my, um, my uh, the Nintex workflow from my, my SharePoint list into CRM and we've created an entity, we've assigned them to the user that created it, we can now take him through our, um, our sales process. We can within CRM obviously capture more information if we want to about Charlie Brown um, and he's then obviously within a, a structured process. The other thing that I'm uh, that I'm doing with my workflow is that I'm going to provision a Yammer group. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, with Yammer, Yammer is a, a a social platform, part of the Microsoft Office 365 stack. Um, some people refer to it as a, a kind of Facebook for the enterprise. It's it's not quite that, I don't think, but it is a, a great social platform for doing. Um, project engagement work, for doing collaboration, for doing um, idea generation and, and innovation management within an organization, but also just um, social stuff. So for example, within um, Point Beyond, we have a, an area for uh, non-work stuff and stuff that's safe to demo. And, and here it is. So just a load of chit chat about what we get up to at weekends and all the fun that we have. Uh, while we go out fishing with our kids, for example, or when we happen to bump into the uh, former CTO of, uh, of Yammer um, in a bar. Obviously, I'm not going to show you all of the uh, the internal dialogue that we talk about our clients and projects and stuff, but that's, that's a, a quick overview of the kind of thing that we do with Yammer. So within my process here, I'm creating a dedicated group within Yammer for talking about and sharing and collaborating on this lead or this opportunity, Charlie Brown at Peanuts Inc. Now, historically, I've done a lot of work with clients to do things like provision SharePoint sites. 
based on a status field within CRM and obviously within Nintex we can do exactly that but what I what I find is that in the early doors of a sales process you probably don't have much documentation you don't have the need to do lots of um, that kind of entity centric collaboration it's more just thoughts and idea sharing and chat around how best to position things and how best to uh, proceed with an opportunity um, which in my opinion is far better done within Yammer rather than within uh, within SharePoint. So while that's going on in the background it does take just a couple of minutes to provision within Yammer. Um, so we've already done the CRM provision, we've got the lead in there, it's now in the background creating my Yammer group. Um, while it's doing that, let me show you how we how we put this together and how easy some of these things are. So um, apologies to switch users. Uh, I'm now not the demo user, I'm now logged in as me, as you'll tell from my picture up here, uh, and I have full admin rights. So uh, you'll see an extra bunch of buttons and bells and whistles because I'm the uh, I'm the admin. So Within my, my list, so my lead capture list, this is where the, the information was written from my form that I captured off my iPad. So here we are, here's Charlie Brown. You'll see that adding Nintex to my Office 365 site, it's a very, very seamless and slick integration. So I don't have a separate area that I need to go to. It, I've got my Nintex forms and my Nintex workflow buttons here in the ribbon. So the form, I've got the the form that I target to a desktop user and then one that I target to a tablet user for example so I filled it out on my iPad what this allows us to do this this device targeting is if you need to have separate um, separate fields separate functionality depending on the device that someone is using so um, common example would be if you're on a mobile phone then something that's more of a quick capture is probably going to be more beneficial than having um, a, a field, uh, sorry, a form that's got lots and lots of fields in it. Likewise, something like geolocation is entirely relevant and plausible on a smartphone or a tablet, but is is going to be far less accurate on a desktop PC that's connected to a um, you know, corporate network. And within Nintex Form Designer, we can target different forms that are associated to the same data, the same list in SharePoint, the same workflow entity, but we can target them to different platforms to make the behavior and the fields that we're field capturing slightly different if that's what we need to do. The workflow itself I've created using uh, what we call a state machine. So instead of it being a, a linear process as we would historically have done within SharePoint workflow or SharePoint designer workflow, or indeed some other workflow platforms that are available, Nintex gives us this, this state machine. So we don't need to worry about how many loops we could possibly go through as we used to do with SharePoint workflows. We simply are bothered about what is the state of the entity, what is the value of one of the fields of the, of the entity, and we then just loop an infinite number of times through this workflow depending on the state. So we start off with the CRM creation. We go through, and all I've done to do the creation within CRM Online is drag and drop from the uh, uh, from the design palette here. So it's literally drag and drop in CRM creates a, um, a record, create a lead, and then we're done. So we set set the next state, which I now happens to be um, create Yammer, or rather create the Yammer group. So we then go through this branch, and we've got some some logic here. So we're checking to see if the the group already exists. If the group doesn't exist, then we provision it. If the group does exist, then we don't. And then we go through the notification to basically send confirmation email to back to the, uh, the user inviting them to join their Yammer group and to start some collaboration. Hopefully by now the workflow has had a chance to do its stuff. So let's go back and just confirm that as the demo user. Excellent, here we go. So this is my workflow history. You see that we've created the entities within CRM, we've created the Yammer group and we've posted to that Yammer group and we've sent an invite. Absolutely fantastic. So if I now come into my Yammer group, which will have been created based on one of the values uh, that I submitted of my form, which uh, I believe is the title of the event that we're at.
So in true demo style, it's refusing to play ball. There we are. So it just took a little bit of time. So provisioning solutions, so building solutions with Azure is my new group. Uh, we can see that we've got a, a new lead. We can click through onto that to then go back to the, uh, the, the new lead, which is going to be my Charlie Brown. And, oh, fantastic. So we've already got some engagement within our organization. So my colleague Sonia has spotted that we've, um, we've got a new lead registered and is going to make sure that, uh, that Charlie Brown gets invited to our next webinar. Absolutely fantastic. So showing, once again, you know, ca capturing information, rooting that information into the relevant parts within an organization, be them assigning tasks to individuals or creating entities within the different pillars within Office 365. So from that one form, I've got things going on within CRM. I've got things going on within Yammer. I could also provision the um, a SharePoint site or a discussion or some kind of entity within SharePoint or within OneDrive, um, if that's what I, uh, I wanted to do. And obviously, because they've been created within CRM, we can do that, so we'll create within Yammer, we can do the chat around that, uh, that entity within Yammer, but because it's within CRM, we also get the ability to, to link our email back to CRM. So while strictly speaking not a feature of Nintex, this is an example of how with the with the right configuration and the, the right implementation, instead of appearing like this disparate pillars of technology, the Office, uh, Office 365 and Cloud Experience for Microsoft can be very, very unified and joined up. So I'm going to send an email to Charlie at uh, made up email, as I, I don't know who owns charliebrown.com. And I'm going to associate this email with the new lead entity of Charlie Brown. So this is a bit of standard functionality from, uh, from Microsoft. So we'll see it's looked up the leads that are associated with me. Charlie Brown is the new one that we created just a few moments ago. So show that it's not smoke and mirrors. That's exactly what we typed into the, the form on the iPad. Peanuts Incorporated uh, and is interested in Nintex document assembly. We can then add that association and send that email off. Now, when Charlie responds to um, my Mintex demo user by email, that email will become associated with my um, uh, entity within CRM. So again, joining together email with customer relationship management. It does take a few seconds to come through, so I might be a bit premature coming into CRM it's there. Ah, there we are. So there's my email. So this is my demo. Click through onto the title of that. And I can see that I didn't type anything into the body of that email. But you get the idea. So joining together disparate parts of the Microsoft Office 365 stack with a series of um, workflows and, and, and bits of configuration. Excellent. So Nintex Forms and Workflows allows us to automate business processes in a very quick and easy way. And you know, although I've got a technical background, I'm no longer a developer or a coder. I can't do that level of uh, uh, level of technical implementation anymore. So the fact that I can just drag and drop uh, and create workflows and create business processes from conversation with a client, implement a, a workflow, it's really straightforward and, and simple stuff. As Jessica alluded to earlier. The more, um, the more that, that she's seen us do with Nintex, the more she's confident to do herself with Nintex, which is fantastic. You know, who is a, um, as, as an end customer of Microsoft and Nintex doesn't want to be empowered to do things themselves. You know, no one wants to be entirely reliant upon a third party. You want to be able to do things yourself, and, and Nintex is a great platform that allows that. Now, one of my standout favorite features of Nintex workflow is, is what's called lazy approval. And I can't do a Nintex webinar and not cover lazy approval because it's, it's such a great feature. So I've shown obviously a mobile interface and the tablet interface and the web-based interface. Um, that's all well and good. If I get a, uh, so something like a leave request for someone that reports into me, instead of having to click on the link in the email or instead of just using my phone and log on to a PC in order to get to some approval system, 
what I can do with Nimtex workflow is what's called lazy approval. So assigning me a task of approving leave for Fred, I can reply to that email either from Outlook on my PC or from my mobile client. I can simply just type approve or reject, send that email. That email gets associated into my task and approves or rejects that workflow entity based on my response to the email, which is an absolutely fantastic feature and one that every client that we have absolutely loves. I love it. It's a great feature and one that I think is um, uh, is well worth looking at. So just to give you a step by step, so um, the request would be submitted. That would start an in-text workflow. The request would be routed to a manager. So for example, if Fred submitted a leave request, initiated a workflow, sent to me as the manager, I will then respond to the email saying approved, because I'm a very generous kind of guy. Submitter would be notified, say yes, Matt has approved your leave, Fred, and then that would be the end of the workflow. Very simple and straightforward example, but for busy mobile workers, the ability to, to do approvals or rejections of um, business tasks and activities is absolutely essential. You know, we have one client who uses it for um, approving or rejecting whether or not they're going to respond to a bid. Um, they have uh, obviously a very, very busy mobile sales director who's out on the road a lot. He needs to approve whether or not one of the, the sales guys that works for him is going to pursue a particular opportunity um, because they, they work in uh, um, uh, construction and engineering. Uh, every opportunity they pursue is very costly. Um, and so they do that using lazy approval. Um, simple yes or no, are we going to carry on? And it, it just it allows them to be so much more agile and responsive. You've seen the multiple devices, so I've, so I've shown it on a, a Windows mobile phone and, a, a, and, a, and an iPad, and also how we can target the different forms and maybe some of the, the logic and the reasoning as to why you'd want a different form for a mobile device rather than from a tablet or for a, a, a full fat desktop client. A couple of other really cool features that I think are, are worth sending out. So uh, cascading lookups is um, is one that was always a massive problem. If anyone's done anything with InfoPath, um, it was a massive problem with InfoPath, um, and it's so easy with uh, with Nintex Forms. So real common example: country and city. If you've got a massive long list of cities that you have an office in, but your first field is country, if you choose UK as a country then there is very little point in, in showing someone New York as one of those options. So let's choose England as our uh, first country's first drop-down value. We're then presented with only those that are relevant based on a prior selection, which is obviously hugely, uh, hugely beneficial and actually really complicated to do in other technologies. I don't know why other vendors don't catch up with when in textile with that. Likewise, the ability to do things like, as I said, you know, radio buttons and, and scorings, uh, really, really um, good stuff. So in summary, so why Nintex? Well, Nintex is, as, as, as they would say, and I would agree with them, a world leader around forms of workflow that plugs into cloud services such as Office 365. They're about empowering the end customers not being reliant upon Nintex themselves or on Nintex partners such as Point Beyond for anything more than the initial implementation and then ongoing advice and guidance. I think the, the way that Jessica put it earlier is, is absolutely spot on, that we, we've helped them get the, all their initial implementations done. As time goes on, Jess is doing more and more herself and reliant upon us and our team less and less as, uh, as things progress. And that's exactly what, what we would want. So, so why, why Point Beyond? Well, um, we're very business focused, but we're also very uh, technically skilled and adept. We're used for, experienced at delivering all kinds of different solutions on the Microsoft Cloud stack, uh, particularly within financial services. We have a low code approach, so Mintex isn't about development, it's about using tools and, and, and no code to deliver solutions. Um, and we're you know, a good partner to work with, as, as I think Jessica mentioned earlier. So what are the key takeaways from today's webinar? Well, there's there's no infrastructure that's required to do anything that I've shown you. Literally, I've, I've been here sitting in front of my laptop. Everything else has been up in the cloud. It's very fast to implement. And also, I think there's a, a huge opportunity for you to look at solutions that you've delivered over the past few years to think about how you could now 
deliver those in a better, more mobile friendly or more agile or more responsive way using something like Nintex Forms and Workflow. Because I've not had to do any code, it's been a very, very quick thing to implement. I've not had to go through the complex specification and testing cycles that are associated with custom development projects. And because Nintex Online is a cloud offering, they do have an on-prem offering in the same way that, that Microsoft do, that those strategies align very neatly. Um, but in the cloud offering, new features are being added all the time, new actions, new, connect, new connectors into new systems, and you're able to obviously buy into that and you just get those new features um, as long as you maintain your, your software assurance. So what should we do next? Well, as I mentioned, look at the solutions that you've already um, implemented um, and potentially under-delivered. Things that were done a couple of years ago, because of the way that the technology moves on at such a pace, things that were done 18 months, two years ago, are maybe now worth revisiting because of the new power that you have available to you at a very, very compelling price point. In terms of more greenfield stuff, well, look at what are your common business processes that span multiple departments or multiple directorates or multiple countries within your organization. Those are great candidates for optimization and streamlining because you'll see the biggest bang, the biggest return. The more people that you can touch, the more you're going to get back. And of course, looking at options where you have already implemented things where you've got some of it in CRM, some of it in SharePoint, some of it in Yammer. Nintex can help you. If nothing else, it can help you just provision those things in a very automated way, taking the bottleneck and the constraint away from IT and taking the, the onus away from the end user to having to remember to do all of those things against some, some kind of you know, manual checklist. And Rounding up, so thank you all very much attending, uh, for attending the, the webinar today. Um, we'd like to offer all of you a, a trial of Nintex, uh, but not just a trial. These of you, you know, you can sign up for that yourselves online. Signing up for a trial via us, we'd like to actually deliver some value. So showcasing what is the potential of, of Nintex. So we'll, we'll be able to give you a tailored demo within your organization. So if you let us know the kind of scenarios, the kind of solutions that you're looking at, we'll be able to deliver a, a more tailored demo rather than the very generic one that I've done today. And of course, the trial of Nintex Online. So if you're in Office 365, that's dead easy to spin up because it's in the cloud. And we can look at, at helping you model some of those common core processes within Nintex Online and within your Office 365 tenant, because there's going to be nothing that's going to get you more momentum and more buy-in from your execs than actually doing something for real within your organization. If you're not yet within the Office 365 cloud and you're just kind of kicking the tires and thinking about it, but you've still got on-prem technologies, then um, Nintex can be delivered uh, can be delivered on-prem, but obviously it's not going to have the speed and agility of deployment and the rapid time to market that the cloud does. So with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for attending. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'll hang around for uh, the next 10 minutes or so and answer any questions that you have. But uh, thank you all for attending. And thank you, Jessica, very much for being part of today's webinar. We really do appreciate it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> a couple of questions coming through. Uh, so one question around um, around cost. Um, so uh, in terms of the the cost of Nintex, um, we really need to have a, a more in depth conversation in order to to make sure that we're positioning the correct licensing model um, and therefore the correct pricing. Um, the the guys at Nintex are very aware of the, the the price point that they need to be at in order to be successful in the market. And actually, when you compare them to some of the competitors in the in the cloud and on-prem workflow space, Nintex, as a rule, generally work out to be at a far higher value point than um, than most of the others. There's there are ways now within the licensing model of of getting a, a relatively low bar of entry in terms of the licensing costs, but then being able to to grow the license as your use case expands and therefore you're realizing more benefit from the Nintex investment across your organization. Um, 
The, the on-prem licensing model is, is slightly different to the cloud-based licensing model. Obviously, as a, as a cloud piece of technology, it's done on a, uh, on a subscription basis, um, whereas the, the on-prem model is, uh, is still in a more of a, a traditional licensing model. Uh, one other question that we have, uh, um, limitations. So what are the limits in terms of number of items on a lookup list? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. So I'll make a note of that question and make sure that I get back to you uh, with an answer to that. Um, it's a pretty big number from what I recall, not one that we hit on a, uh, on a regular basis at all. And it's the kind of thing that where you have a, a technical limitation, it's far more likely that you would have a, a kind of a usability limitation before you hit a technical limitation. Um, and what I mean by that is if you've got a, a very complex, very long pick list on a, on a form, that actually detracts away from the, the usability, particularly in a mobile interface where you've got a very limited amount of screen real estate to present that, uh, that list of options. Um, in which case, making use of something like the cascading ability within in-text forms might be a better way to go because it allows people to be um, to be far quicker. You, know, you think of the scenario with, of having to choose the location of every um, police force in the UK. That's going to be a large number of police forces. If you did a, uh, a county or region-based drop-down first and chose Midlands, and then only had the, the options of choosing between Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire, Warwickshire, etc., um, then that would be far more usable from a, an end user perspective before you hit the, um, uh, any kind of technical limitation. That said, I will get back to you with what the actual uh, limitation is. A couple of other um, uh, very nice uh, bits of feedback and comments, so yeah, thank you all for that. Um, Next question up, uh, can an on-premise workflow be migrated to SharePoint Online? Um, there are two answers to that, really. One of them is yes, the other one is it depends. So for the most part, yes, if you've been using out-of-the-box actions within Mintex on-prem, then using migration tools from, uh, from organizations. So we, we work with a couple of migration tool vendors, um, uh, ShareGate and MetaLogics are the ones that uh, that we work with for migrations to do with SharePoint and Mintax. And to a large extent, the answer is yes, those workflows can be migrated. The area where it flows into the it depends answer are where you've got uh, actions or particularly system integration that is, is different within Office 365. Um, obviously, in the world of on-prem technology, the world is your oyster. You can customize and bend things as you need them to be. You don't have the same level of full flexibility within the cloud um, because, obviously, Microsoft own the platform, and they're not going to let you run server-side code on their multi-tenant environment. So there are some actions that aren't yet available within the cloud, um, and those that are available, some of them have to work slightly differently. So instead of being executed within the, uh, the the world of SharePoint, they become executed within uh, the Nintex Live, their, their cloud offering, which um, for interest happens to run on uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, and so you can sometimes do a kind of a one-to-one -one mapping of the way that it was done on-prem would migrate to, to online, but it does need a little bit of manual configuration. And, and where we are at the moment, there are other things that aren't yet available online, but those tend to be the more complex actions and, and particularly where there's been system integration done. Apologies, that was a really long-winded rambling answer to what was quite a straightforward and simple question. I hope that's, uh, that covers it for you. Okay, well, thank you all very much for attending. If there are uh, no further questions, then uh, what I'll do is I'll wrap things up now. Um, my contact information is, uh, is on the screen. Um, if you'd like to take advantage of the uh, of the offer, uh, then please email us at info at pointbeyond.com. Um, if you would uh, just like to get in touch, then feel free to uh, uh, to email either info at pointbeyond or email me directly. Um, as usual, we'll put the uh, the recording up online in a day or so, um, and uh, and drop you through the link by email. But I so said thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Jessica, for helping out. 
Um, and we'll leave it there.